In this unusual video, we won't talk about law, but about law. You probably have heard about the discussions in Europe about the planned copyright directive of the European Union. Today, I want to inform you a bit about it and give you my opinion on it, which will not be a surprise. This video is directed to my European viewers, but also anyone who is interested in the topic, because it can have consequences on a lot of other countries outside of Europe too. Before we start, a disclaimer. I'm obviously a content creator on YouTube and I also monetize my videos, so I get some money from Google. My opinion is therefore obviously biased and I can only offer you my perspective and explain the directive as I understand it. I try to be as close to the text of the directive as I can. This is also all from the perspective of European law. This video also breaks the unwritten rule that talking about politics on YouTube is a bad idea. Please keep it civil in the comment section. I'm citizen of the European Union and I really like the idea of the EU and I also often like what they do. It's not perfect, but what is? However, in this case I disagree with the idea behind this copyright directive so much that I feel the need to make a video. I also dislike defending big companies like Google, Twitter, Facebook and so on. I'm against the core principle of this directive, not for some companies. Information from the future. In the final version of the directive, the articles are numbered differently. So article 13 is actually article 17 in it now. I got this information after I was done voice recording, so I use the old numbering in this video. But let's start. What's actually going on? The EU saw the need to reform the copyright law in Europe and I fully agree. The copyright law needs an update. Things have changed due to the increased use of the internet and technological developments. This resulted in creating a copyright directive. What does directive mean? A directive is not a law, but a so to say blueprint for law. When the European Parliament votes for a directive, all member states have up to two years to create the actual laws that fit into their systems out of this blueprint, the directive. That's why directives often leave some room for interpretation. A few years ago, about 2016, the EU established a group to create this copyright directive. This was primarily driven by my country, Germany, by the CDU, CSU to be precise, which is the political party that is currently ruling. For example, Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel belongs to the CDU. So over the years this directive was formed and the European Parliament approved finalizing it September 2018. Now the three bodies of the EU, the European Commission, the Council of the European Union and the European Parliament negotiate the final text of the directive behind closed doors, the so-called trilogue. Not all members of the three bodies are present, they form small groups. Luckily, one negotiator, Julia Reda from the German Pirate Party, published parts of these negotiations and later the final text. Without her, we would have been in the dark for quite some time. Check her Twitter for news and updates. She often also posts in English. When the three bodies come to an agreement in the trilogue, the final directive text is published and the European Parliament votes yes or no. Actually, it's a bit more complicated. For example, some changes can be requested and articles can be deleted, but I want to keep it simple. If it gets the majority of the votes, this directive will become reality. This final vote hasn't happened yet and it will come at the end of March 2019, probably the 26th, so it's quite close. This was the process behind the creation. Now we come to what is in this directive that is so heavily debated. There are primarily two articles in this directive that are problematic. Article 11 and especially Article 13. Another one that is also problematic but does not get as much attention is Article 12. Article 11 is about the so-called ancillary copyright for press publishers. Here it becomes important again that the driving force behind this directive is Germany. A similar law already exists here and in Spain too if I'm not mistaken. 
What it does is in my opinion really bizarre. With it, for example, press publishers get an additional right to protect their press articles. The copyright of an article has its writer, not the publisher. The publisher basically just buys a license to, for example, print it. The creator's work is protected and the creator has the rights to decide how his work can be copied and distributed. The press publisher negotiates a license with the writer and they use and publish his article article or book or whatever, but they are just the publisher, not the creator. Article 11 now gives press publishers a protection too and I tried to explain this with a famous example. If you google something news related or click on google news, google potentially imports a thumbnail, so a little preview picture, the headline and the first one or two sentences of a press article. With article 11 this becomes illegal without a license from the press publisher. So basically the press publishers want Google to pay them when Google shows these elements on their site. As explained we have this already in Germany and it had the following positive effects. That were all. Google just said we pay you nothing, we will just block you. Then the press companies lost a lot of traffic to their sites and clicks and then the German press publishers gifted Google a free license, lost a bit of money, didn't get any back and prevented any existing or hypothetical company from the future in Germany that wants to build for example a search engine or import small news snippets from doing this. So other companies are also in a competition disadvantage now because they won't get a free license. Now that press companies failed with it nationally, they lobbied to get this on European level and this is basically article 11. So press publishers want all the traffic from Google and alike and they want them to pay for the privilege to link to their sites. My critique of this idea, it's purely economic driven, we come later to this. There is no benefit for the normal user, just that things can become harder to find in the future, so a bit of inconvenience. I couldn't care less about Google and press publishers having an argument, but when it potentially impacts me using the internet and actually finding things on it, I see a problem. This also affects other platforms, even though there could be some grey areas. For example, what happens if you put out a tweet and include a news article in it? Twitter often does the same thing as Google. It shows a thumbnail, a headline and about two sentences as a preview. Almost every commercial platform who does this will be most likely affected. There are some exceptions though. Quote from article 11. These rights shall not apply to private or non-commercial uses of press publications carried out by individual users. Not sure what this means exactly or how this will be interpreted into national law. Twitter makes money but their users usually don't. So is this a non-commercial use carried out by individual users? If I post a press publication on Twitter or let's say Facebook, Considering the intention of this directive, I would argue Twitter and friends are no exceptions, but who knows. The other two exceptions are the protection granted under the first subparagraph shall not apply to acts of hyperlinking and the rights referred to in this first subparagraph shall not apply in respect of uses of individual words or very short extracts of a press publication. What does short extracts mean? Maybe Google can still use the first sentence by that? Well, nobody knows. It depends on the final national law, which can be different in every state of the EU, even though it's derived from the same directive. And if this is not clear too, a court has to decide this. That's not an unusual process, but also not my exact idea of legal certainty to be honest. So basically article 11 can change how search results and linking articles as we know it are presented or it could change nothing. It's really weird. Interestingly extracting a thumbnail and showing it is in most cases a copyright violation right now anyway but nobody seems to care. Also article 11 does not exclude a negotiation where for example Google and friends pay nothing so a free license and continue with what they are doing. From my perspective this article will not change much for the big companies but smaller ones active in Europe who can negotiate a good deal or a free license are a bit screwed and have a competitive disadvantage. With this the position of the big companies improves even further. 
It also can become difficult to find certain things on the internet. So overall, Article 11 is not a good idea in my opinion. Article 12 goes into a similar direction. It's really short, but in my opinion screws over creators like writers and journalists. It's a bit complicated to explain though. In some countries in Europe, like Germany, there is a law or system in place that compensates creators for the fact that it's legal to create private copies of copyright protected work, the so called private copying levy. So for example, I copy a page of a book on the copier for private purposes. That's legal. This existing law now allows copyright collecting societies to collect money from all sold devices and alike that can be used to copy something. For example from every sold copier, printer, USB stick, CDR, cassette, scanner and so on a small amount of money goes to the related collecting society and they pay it out to the creators who have to be members of these collecting societies for this applying some rules in who gets what share of it. So if a journalist writes articles for a newspaper he gets some money out of this if he is a member of the related copyright collecting society which is often the case in Germany. When we look at the directive benefits you get from the systems are uses of work made under an exception or limitation to the transferred or licensed right. Now with article 12 the publishing company also gets a share out of that money. In Germany and some other countries with similar systems like Belgium this was common practice for a long time already. But in Belgium somebody filed a lawsuit against this and won on European level. So the European court of justice said this practice is illegal. And also in Germany the federal court of justice confirmed this. So since 2016 this practice vanished in Germany and you now see the intention behind this article. The publishers want a share of that money again. If this idea is right or wrong is hard to say. They of course have also a bit of work with for example publishing the book. On the other side it's the work of their authors and the intention is that they should shall be compensated for the possibility of private copies. This by the way applies to a lot of copyright protected works not just books and press articles. Even though I assume the press and book publishers are the main focus here. Not a fan of this since it's again directed against the small right holders like translators and journalists who will get less money if this passes. There were like 50-50 splits in Germany in some areas and I guess the media companies want something similar back again. Now we come to article 13, the article about upload filters. This is in my opinion one of the core pieces of this directive and is heavily debated. But what does it do? It changes liability of platforms with a lot of exceptions built around it. But here the core. If no authorization is granted online content sharing service providers shall be liable for unauthorized acts of communication to the public of copyright protected works and other subject matter. That means if a platform that is not excluded in the exceptions, we come to this in a moment, has no license for whatever copyright protected material their users upload to their platform, they are liable. So they can be sued. The law right now is the uploading user is liable and the platform has to delete as fast as they can and ensure that it's not uploaded again and is by that out of liability. This directive changes this liability for the not excluded platforms. But they still can get out of it if they fulfill three requirements. A made best efforts to obtain an authorization. So they have to get all the licenses. And made in accordance with high industry standards of professional diligence best efforts to ensure the unavailability of specific works and other subject matter for which the right holders have provided the service providers with the relevant and necessary information. That means they have to really try within the boundaries of high technical standards to prevent their users from uploading material they don't have a license for. This is basically a neat way of avoid saying upload filters. And it even says 
for which the right holders have provided the service providers with the relevant and necessary information. This is YouTube's content ID system, where right holders upload their copyright protected material and the AI system derives something out of it, which allows it to recognize the work in uploaded videos again, even if there are small changes. A solution for a highly complex problem. So the system can only recognize a work when the right holder has told the system about it. And C acted expeditiously upon receiving a sufficiently substantiated notice by the right holders to remove from their websites or to disable access to the notified works and subject matters and made best efforts to prevent their future uploads in accordance with paragraph B. So basically remove it as fast as possible when they receive a notice about a copyright violation on their platform and avoid that it's uploaded again. What's now the problem with it? Interestingly, YouTube does all this already, probably not as strict as they would have to do it with Article 13. They get licenses from right holders, they have the best developed upload filter on this planet that cost about 60 million dollars in development and who knows how much in operating expenses at any time and they take stuff down as fast as they can on notice. The problem with some exceptions, this applies to all platforms that operate in Europe and provide access to copyright protected material of third parties. Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, likely Reddit and so on. But also smaller sites and services. Whenever users can upload something that might be copyright protected, the platform can be liable. Which is a nightmare for platforms, especially smaller ones. Again, we come to exceptions in a moment. So the basic idea is, whenever you post or upload something onto a commercial platform, your upload has to be checked by, for example, a computer program. If there is a copyright violation for a work the platform has no license for, else the platform can be sued too. Considering how much stuff is uploaded every day, this becomes quite a task and in a worst case scenario can lead to platforms blocking far more than needed. For example, analyze Analyzing films on YouTube in detail, even if it's 100% legal what you do and you are sticking to the quotation rights, is almost impossible even now if you want to monetize it with ads. Videos like this get claimed all the time and YouTube creators are not happy about it. But let's fully understand article 13 before we look into potential consequences. So what are the exceptions? I said all commercial platforms, even smaller ones, but they must be older than three years or below certain metrics to be considered small. This exception is to protect startups. You find this in paragraph 4AA. Educational sites like Wikipedia are excluded too, but only from article 13, not article 11. Here's the full list of exceptions from article 2 that is labeled definitions. Providers of services such as not-profit online encyclopedias, not-for-profit educational and scientific repositories, open source software developing and sharing platforms, electronic communication service providers as defined in Directive 2018-1972, establishing the European Electronic Communication Code, online marketing places and business-to-business -business cloud services and cloud services which allow you users to upload content for their own use shall not be considered online content sharing service providers within the meaning of this directive. Article 13 states that only online content sharing service providers are affected. In addition, the economic reality of a platform must be considered too. So the directive expects less from small platforms. Doesn't sound that bad you might say, but let me explain you my concerns. Best efforts to get licenses. This sounds reasonable but is a very big part of the intention behind this directive and also a potential problem. What the creators of this directive mean is that the not excluded platforms shall get licenses from the big companies. What they overlook a bit is that we are all right holders. Make a photo with your smartphone. Congratulations, you are a right holder. Writing a longer detailed reddit post 
Congratulations, you are a right holder. In these modern times, we are right holders all the time. Our works might be irrelevant in commercial space, but there is no distinction between big commercial works and photos of my last vacation. So do platforms need a license from you and me and all humans on earth? What is best efforts? We don't know. We will know when we see the final national law, which can be slightly different in all 28 member states of the EU. And if these laws are not precise enough either, we need to wait for a court ruling. You might say this is a normal process of our legal system and I agree, but I would simply wish for more legal certainty and at least an indicator of what best efforts mean when a directive is that far reaching. YouTube is a gigantic video platform. What does best efforts mean for them? What does it mean for a semi-small commercial portal where users can upload their private photos and share them with the world? What does this mean for certain forums? We don't know yet, but the consequences can be huge in a worst case scenario. I also said that this revealed the intention behind the directive. Right now the big internet media companies like Google are not European companies but insanely popular and within the internet insanely powerful even in Europe. With this they have an incredible good position for license negotiations. It's almost impossible to have a better position. They can just say we will block you and you can say your traffic and media relevance for certain groups of age goodbye. So they can negotiate very good prices. Like I said Google got a license for the German version of article 11 for free. This directive is intended to change this. Now companies like Google must have a license. Not one, but from almost everyone. And now it turns around. European media companies suddenly have a much better position because the powerful platforms from the US need something from them. Google is also a bad example because they already have a lot of licenses, but they got of course good conditions I guess. Also there are some licenses that can be relevant but are almost impossible to get or let's say unreasonable expensive. An example would be movies. Licenses for the newest movies still running in cinemas won't be possible to get for any platform. So when somebody uploads a new release movie on YouTube illegally it's a problem because they can't have the license for it. This brings us straight to the upload filters. Uploads like this have to be filtered out. You have to to think about it that way. On all platforms where people can upload user generated content, copyright violations happen all the time. I make a photo with my smartphone and send it to a friend. He thinks it's funny and uploads it somewhere on social media like Twitter without my permission. Usually not a big deal, but this is actually a copyright violation. And with article 13 the platform is liable for that. Almost all memes are technically copyright violations in Europe but nobody does something against it. And it's important to understand why. Because it's something like a stalemate. For the actual right holder it's not worth the effort to go after every small Twitter or imager user. And even if they did this could lead to public backlash and a loss of reputation for right holder or damage a brand. In contrast there are also positive effects. This can increase the reach of a brand and be seen as free publicity. And that's why this is often tolerated even if technically illegal. Let's place another example. Often companies even give a general permission to use gameplay footage on YouTube and Twitch, even allowing to monetize it inside the partner programs. Because it helps them marketing their games, so both sides get something out of it. Copyright law is a very complex area and it's quite surprising what can be a violation. For example somebody uploads a vlog on YouTube. In the background is a picture on the wall even without the focus being on it. But neither the uploader owns the rights for it nor YouTube. So we have a copyright violation. It's quite easy to construct violations like this. We live in a time where communication between humans shifts more and more towards the internet but also tons of elements are copyright protected. A new copyright law needs to reflect this reality. 
not all violations in certain edge cases deal actual damage to the right shoulder and in my opinion must be tolerated. Sometimes right holders can even benefit when people talk about their works on the internet. But the internet allows to communicate with pictures, sound, videos and texts. Which creates a conflict with classical copyright law. This must be addressed by a new copyright reform. With article 13 this is not happening. It tries to force an old concept over a new medium and big platforms have to most likely filter edge cases like this in a worst case scenario because they are liable now too together with the uploader. At least when the picture, video, music, text or whatever is in the database of copyright protected material. In my opinion this is a problem. There are many lawsuits in copyright law and it wouldn't surprise me if people would find ways to abuse these edge cases too. In current law it's like if they can't find the uploader nothing happens as long as the platform deletes a copyright violation fast and ensures that it stays down. With a new law well even if they can't find the uploader they always have the address of for example Google. So in a worst case scenario platforms have to be overly careful with what they allow on their platform and what not. Which can lead to overblocking. Especially if you let a computer program scan everything automatically. It can decide if something is inside the boundaries of the quotation right. That can be even difficult for you. Or if something is a parody or satire. And transformative works like these are a big part of user generated content in our time. And as a YouTuber I can tell you that upload filters make mistakes and have false positives a lot. YouTubers hate this system and are not happy about the platform policies. We developed concepts to build our videos around the content ID system so it does not trigger. Counterclaiming a video can take up to two weeks especially for smaller channels. Imagine you make news videos on YouTube and they get mistakenly blocked for five days on upload. You are basically screwed because the news video is old by then. The article also has no mention about who pays for the damage on false positives. Which shows to me that some of the people who wrote that article do not know the reality of living under upload filters. YouTubers do and they hate the content ID system. At least I can't remember the last time a YouTuber said content ID on YouTube. What a great system. Here's another important point. The directive also demands that satire, parody, quotation, free speech etc. is not limited or prevented. But in my opinion the reality could look differently. YouTube, Twitch, Facebook or Twitter can delete anything they want even today. They can ban you for whatever reason at least in theory because it would potentially generate backlash. It's their platform. I don't see what should prevent them from overblocking. If this directive forces them to. They could block videos and giving users other explanations why their content was blocked like potential terms of service violations. I think it will be hard to contest that. And it depends on national law and what the member states make out of it. The article also has not many solutions to counter overblocking or even abuse. The notion of protecting satire and free speech feels a bit like an alibi addition to the directive. I'm on YouTube and I know about cases where sketchy companies DMCA unpleasant videos about their works. I remember this happening to game critics on YouTube. For example Total Biscuit back in the day. It probably happens rarely but false takedowns due to copyright violations are a potential threat and I would have wished that a copyright directive gives creators who are by the way also right holders more protection in the sector. But as explained this directive is more about helping the big European media companies and copyright collecting societies. Small right holders are more of an afterthought in my opinion. Still this directive could also help smaller artists that can be denied too. But it helps them best if they are in a collecting society.
I would have wished for a copyright directive in Europe to implement a fair use concept that reflects how users use the internet today and getting for example memes and so on out of the grey area into the legal area with maybe demanding to display the sources of the original work. The United States have fair use but in Europe we often only have the quotation right which is a bit more limited and strict. A new fair use could get rid of that greyish area and shift it a bit towards most internet users instead of corporate interests only. But it's not in the directive. It doesn't really consider transformative works which are a big part of the internet culture. Maybe because of the ridiculous long copyright protection times of often far over 100 years and almost nothing ever becoming public domain in modern times. People try to get the right back to use media. It's bizarre that grandchildren today profit from the copyrights of their grandfathers who are already dead for half a century. But that's another topic. On a positive note, if the big companies get all the licenses, it would become easier to use copyright protected material because the platform has the rights. But why should a platform spend so much on all kind of licenses if they can just block content? On paper it sounds great, but I'm not convinced how this will be handled in reality. This directive also offers Google an interesting opportunity even though I'm sure Google is really against this directive. They could sell or rent their content ID system to others. Just imagine they would let people use it for a small amount of money or even for free. Now it becomes difficult for small businesses to argue that a powerful upload filter is financially unreasonable for them which could strengthen Google's position in the end too and introduce filtering on every platform that is not excluded. Bothering with content ID on all platforms does not really provoke happiness inside me. So my opinion on the directive is very negative. I understand that it makes totally sense from the perspective of some artists, the big classical media companies and collecting societies who also lobbied for it. I have no ill will against them. But the directive lacks doing something for the normal users too while potentially impacting them greatly and endangering a bit of freedom. It's a directive purely inspired by economy. I also don't want to create panic. This directive won't totally destroy the internet and be the end of the world. But it brings some inconvenience and probably changes a few things we are used to. The question you have to answer for yourself, is it worth it? If we would take its core idea and delete all exceptions, this directive would be something I would expect in countries like North Korea. Only the exceptions make it to some degree reasonable. Not a fan of building a legal system that introduces content filters on a large scale just with a promise to totally not abuse it ever. In times where political extremes become more popular and political apathy is rising, I think it's not a smart idea and not a good signal at all, especially for the younger generations. They will remember the parties who voted for this if it should turn out as a really bad idea. Also, if this directive gets through, we can't get rid of it fast again under a new parliament because the EU law process is very slow and dependent on governments of member states too. So it will take many years to change it again, even if a court checks if it's constitutional and decides against this directive. This can take years too. Preventing this directive is in my opinion our best option. So what does article 13 mean for my own channel? It could mean that I can't use screenshots from the Lord of the Rings films anymore. Even right now it's technically not allowed in many cases but it's also a bit of a grey area. However I think I could change this easily. But of course it's a bit inconvenient for me. I believe that people mostly watch my videos to hear my comment and not because of me showing some screenshots of films they have probably seen a million times. Gaming wise I'm also not too concerned. Gaming companies still want that people talk about their games especially on Twitch and YouTube. So they will give permissions which they actually even do right now. In the worst case YouTube could only allow their biggest content creators who they can trust to upload content and kick all others out like me. This is a concern but I think it's unlikely. 
Also keep in mind that it takes one to two years till this directive actually becomes national law. Enough time to find other solutions. When you are not from Europe, you could ask why should I care? Because content creators you like have a European audience too and they don't want that their content is for example blocked in Europe. Even US companies could adapt to this law a bit and impact people outside of Europe. This topic was on my radar for quite some time. I actually was close to making a video in December 2018, January 2019. But details weren't set into stone at this time and it looked like that the negotiations would actually fail. Sadly that didn't happen and now we are close to the final vote. Please inform yourself about the topic and think about it. Build your own opinion. I'll link the law text in the description if you are interested. If you are against this directive, there are things you can do. Big demonstrations are planned on the 23rd of March 2019. That's a good way to show politicians that this is a problematic topic that needs more time. You can contact your politicians in the European Parliament via mail, Twitter or even phone. The numbers of their offices are public also the mail addresses. But be peaceful and friendly, otherwise you won't change anything and deal more damage than you would help. Also consider that the elections for the European Parliament are between 23rd and 26th of May 2019, which applies pressure because they want to be re-elected again. There's also an online petition with about 5 million subscribers. I'll link the pages down in the description. My final words on this. I'm a fan of the European Union and seeing how much debate our demonstrations, calls, mails and social media interactions created even inside the governments, especially in Germany, I at least see that democracy is working just fine. If we now even manage to prevent this from happening, it would show this even more. The German government is already in damage control mode and somewhat positioned against upload filters. Not perfect, but a start. We also see that politicians in Europe have vastly underestimated this topic too. It's not too late yet and I think it will be a close call at the 26th of March in the final vote. In my opinion we need a copyright reform but not this one. A bad compromise is in this case not better than no compromise. I see that the music and media industry is still making money under the current system so there is from my perspective no need to rush a bad directive. Whatever happens, there are bigger problems on earth than this. So no reason to get too angry about it. Stay classy, inform yourself and take my opinions with a grain of salt too. Thank you for watching. I worked on this topic for quite some time but ended up in a rush making it. I probably forgot a few points. One thing comes to my mind. A general levy like with the private copies for platforms like YouTube could be a compromise too. And this idea was brought up in the negotiations but not accepted. However, sorry for the audio. Maybe it's okay when I render the video. And as always, if you like the video, consider pressing the like button or subscribing. Stay classy in the comment section. I'm a bit concerned about comments because politics and YouTube are not best friends. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.